Do, 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 do. Well, what up, peeps? How's everyone doing today? Let's talk about our collective illusions for a moment, if we will. I thought it was a perfect video that I watched this morning dealing with this topic that laid out the groundwork for this topic that I've been wanting to make a video about this for a while, but there's no particular this or topic. It really has to do with speech, the way that we structure what we say, and mainly the way that people are afraid to say what they really mean. In fact, I did see a study a while back where college kids were asked in some of the, you know, higher end universities, uh, if they felt like they self-censored or their speech was stifled because of what they really wanted to say, if they did, they feel they'd, they'd be chastised for it. And I believe it was like 56%. I find that to be an extremely, extremely significant portion when over half of college age kids in supposedly liberal colleges say that they're afraid to even speak their mind. And it's a weird time to be alive. We've gone on from real world issues to ignoring real world issues and saying, oh, these don't matter, but what really does matter is this, what they're doing in the schools or what they're doing over here, often having to do with race or with gender or with sexual preferences. And it's become so absurd that I think that the collective illusion is that everybody cares about this, these topics, that people are really concerned about, say, pronouns or the fact that we see people standing up behind the podium arguing about how to define a woman. Now, I don't watch mainstream news, so I'm not sure if this, you know, I hear about these topics. Somebody like, did you hear about so-and-so saying this? It's like, no, actually, I didn't. I usually hear it from other people. So I don't know the full breadth or scope of the stories that are going on regarding this, but I have heard this repeated over and over that supposedly defining a woman is something that's impossible to do. People are afraid to even define what a woman is or what a man is. And look, I grew up during a time when we were being taught in Gen X that, you know, the tough guy attitude and the historical bullshit macho man was going by the wayside. And we grew up believing that being in touch with your feminine side, if you will, was important. And just that mere acknowledgement that there is a feminine side shows that females and males must exist whether you want to define it in energy or body or, you know, biology. I think where this really came to a head, now that I think about it, is uh, I believe I saw that some swimmer had won, uh, trans athletes. And I have an issue with that personally, not that I care, it's not a personal problem. It's just that I agree that it's a problem for people in sports who dedicate their whole lives to a woman's sports where women are obviously born with a lighter frame and less muscle mass and have this person who comes in and identifies as a female who was obviously built like a man beating them at sports is absurd to me. But the absurd part isn't the story itself. It's the way that society is reacting, or rather, not reacting. South Park did an episode about this a few years back when this came up before. In, uh, the, he, he did an episode where it was called Strong Woman, and it was about this woman who was all about you know female empowerment and she went up against this guy who was basically based on macho man Randy Savage. And she was unable to say, hey, this isn't fair. She had to say, good luck. All right. Well, you know, you identify as a female. This thing, this should be common sense to people, in my opinion. How absurd this is. I have nothing against trans people. I have nothing against gay people. I just say that, you know, you can't use your status in order to dominate a field where people dedicate their lives to it and then just to come in when it's based on your physical attributes, the reason why we have men and women's sports. We acknowledge that men and women are different and yet we're afraid to talk about it. And that's just weird. Just weird. Now race has been on the table, of course. This has been an ongoing issue. If you disagree with somebody's policy, um, then you must be a racist, right? Because they're a black person with an idea. It's become so absurd that a lot of people are seeing through this, but they're just kind of grinding their teeth, like afraid to speak up, you lose your job, you get attacked on Twitter. And I believe right now, it's more important than ever to realize this. When I mentioned at the beginning, collective illusions, um, I'll try to find the link to it. It was just a short big think video. And it was a guy saying basically, hey, 
Our collective illusions are things that we all believe, not that, that necessarily things that are true, but ideas that other people hold. It's our illusion that other people think a certain way because of the way that we perceive the group, if you will. Um, it has to do with us thinking that other people must not agree because they don't speak up. And there was a famous stick experiment. You probably you might, may or may not have seen it, but uh, they've done this several times, many different types, where uh, people are put in a room and they're all, this group is all asked to say which line is equal to the length of the one on the left. And they do a whole bunch of them to where it's pretty obvious the line lengths are longer or shorter. Then they get to one where all of the group is in on the joke except one. And he's the experiment. But he thinks everyone else is in it too. And they ask everybody which is the longest line or which one matches this line. And they all pick one that's obviously too short. And the guy ends up choosing it too. It's going along with the group because it's safer, it's more comfortable than actually standing up, standing alone and saying, I don't agree with this. My, my mind tells me differently that this isn't right. And how often do we do that when we know something isn't right? I mean, I try everything I, you know, in my life, what matters is brutal honesty. I have to be honest. I set my boundaries. I tell people how I feel. Doesn't always go over well, but it goes over well for me. And I have to live my own life, right? I'm not going to be wrapped up in denying how I really feel. I do and have in the past self-censored because I don't want to offend people. Uh, because Not because I'm afraid to say something, but because I don't want to hurt people's feelings. I have no intention of giving two shits how other people live their lives. If people want to, you know, live on a mountaintop or in a valley, if people want to I could, I, any choices people make, as long as they don't harm others, is fine uh, with me. I, I just don't care. And this is why I mention this, because I think a lot of people don't realize they really think that the whole of society gives all the shit what everybody else is doing with their life. Only the church does that. That's been an ongoing moral philosophy for a long time, you know, speaking of. And there's always somebody to tell you how to live your life, and it's easier to go with the group, as I was cleaning out my cabinets earlier, I found this book. It's, who are you, right? You could read this book and it's about reincarnation. And uh, a person might read this and think, huh. And then they talk to a couple of other people that have read it and then maybe they see a show where somebody reflects some of the ideas and the next thing you know, well, the, maybe the group's right because those feelings become comfortable. Same thing you could get from, you know, reading the Book of Mormon or the Bible, or even having somebody recommend Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis, who, for some reason, people love that book. I don't remember where I picked it up at, but the idea that that confirms that, that this person's had a feeling about something that confirms what we want to believe, that's fine if that works for you in your life. But the minute you go trying to push that on me, you're going to have a problem and I'm going to disagree because I'm honest about it. This is exactly the same way I feel about modern woke culture, politics, if you will. The idea that if you don't agree completely on the race issue, then you must be a racist. If you don't want to abolish the police, or you don't stand, in, or you see that the BLM leaders ended up, you know, funding themselves and buying big houses, and, or you start hearing that maybe things aren't the way that you always thought they were, and it's hard for us to admit that. The, the bigger question here, like I said, obscuring the idea between men and women was just an example, but what is a man? What is a woman? What is uh, race, right? What's racism? And what is culture? You know, why are we so wrapped up in what other people think? And if we step back and ask ourselves that, we can learn a lot. Um, co the collective illusions are basically about what people, assuming what other people want, but it's also assuming what other people love, what other people hate, how many people are in a particular group or a mindset we don't know this data. We don't know the inner workings of the mind of every person around us. We go by statistics as best as we can find them, but most people don't look at statistics as to how people think. And even those are inaccurate because people bullshit. So um, it's really a major component of this is, as I wanted to bring up the whole collective illusions thing, it's because it's not about what people really as much love or hate. or It's about what do people worry about. This is another place where our politicians are completely delusional 
to think that we give a shit about A or B or C. For the most of the part, people are, for example, talking about the, the national debt, right? We're going to reduce the national debt. And people go, oh, all right, okay. And, and you hear people arguing, and you, you know, or see them in comment sections. People are like, oh, the debt went up this much under this. Who fucking cares? Do you really care about the national debt? No, we care because we're told to care because someone else cares because we think it reflects our own pocketbook somehow. The truth is, none of us even really understand a lot of the things that we complain about or even know the science or the data behind, say, the difference between men and women or whether masks work or how effective a cer certain pharmaceutical is. We get into groupthink and that's it. Just follow our group and have an illusion that everyone else thinks the same way. Then we start to find out a lot of people that are in our so-called group uh, don't think the same way, but they're afraid to speak out. And I say the group because it's when you're, if you're a liberal, let's say, or a conservative in a lot of these groups, smaller in, inside groups within them, you have to follow a checklist of policies that you believe and things you believe and agree with in order to be a member or else you're outcast. This is just true, the same as religion. If you go into your church and say, I believe all of this, but I think that this chapter meant something different, you'll be laughed out. There, there are exceptions, but you know what I mean. Overall, the, over, the overall effect is that most people want to believe that what they know is true, and they don't want to budge on it. And it doesn't work very well. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think what's happened because it's created a lot of wusses, as far as men, as I mentioned, women and men um, are afraid to even often be women or men, right? I have no problem with a man who's effeminate or a woman who's masculine, none of that. I don't give a shit about that. Just acknowledge that those things exist. You see what I mean? Because often what happens is we've raised passive men. There's a generation of complete wusses, not all, but many who just don't really stand up for themselves or even know how to I'm not talking about a physical altercation either. I'm just telling, talking about standing by your principles, knowing who you are, working for something and purpose in your own life, not being overly social justice warrior oriented, let's say, where you want to save everyone else when you can't even save yourself kind of mentality. And don't get me wrong, many social injustices do exist, but a lot of people use it as a play card to feel like they're part of a group, of course. And... Uh, but there is a yin-yang in everything. You see, like, say, with the male and female, it's all over in nature. It seems like very common sense. The fact that it's even an argument to me, um, it's pretty silly. So a lot of these younger men, and I don't mean to insult calling all the younger men wusses. That's not the case. Don't, you know, don't get me wrong here. But the ones who are know who you are. I've been through some passive phases in my life, back and forth. I'm still a a pacifist type person. I don't like war. I don't like violence. I talk my way out of fights. I have no interest in quarrels for physical domination over other people. But I think that's part of, say, even being a good man is to not want control over other people. When people talk about leadership, it's not about dominating other people or telling them what to do. It's about really just being a good role model, a good example for your friends, for your family, for your kids. And we all try our best we're all struggling in this. The struggle is real. We're all in this together, regardless of what we identify as. But why is it that the smallest groups that are the most marginalized often push back so hard, assuming that everyone is really, really gives more of a shit than they do? Like, I don't know anybody out there who is a anything phobe, right? We talk about transphobes and homophobes and you know, xenophobia and all these different fears of cultures, fear of this and that. I think the only thing most people I know fear is just life itself. You know, we fear the unknown. The unknown to us is scary. And that's why we like comfort. That's why we like the familiar. That's why we like ritual and routine. And that's why it's afraid. we're afraid to step outside of our comfort zone and think differently or to reprocess something we thought we knew. And because of all this, men and women and every 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 member of society has become weaker as the whole becomes weaker and all of us are forced to continuously process all this drivel that is really meaningless that doesn't affect the big picture uh, 
and we create issues where there really are none. The media is not your friend. First and foremost, <clears throat> it's like a paradox of knowledge. The more you know, it's almost like the less you wish you knew about certain things. There is a huge information gap between people and even having a basic discussion on some premise about a one object, you've got to go through the scientific history of how that was created, what kind of materials. It's like arguing over coal versus green energy, right? You could argue all day that coal is, is horrible and that green energy is great, but then you start looking at the cost to manufacture solar panels, the transportation, the replacement, uh, how much windmills, they use the rare earth magnets which are mined in China, which create radioactive pits, and you start seeing the bigger environmental impact of all the things that we do, right? Then it's not so simple anymore. And when things start get to, to get complex and we have to wade through more than just, no, this is good, this is bad, this is green, this is not, or this is, you know, nothing can be really nailed down that simply. There is a lot of gray area out there, my friends. I think we all know this. Things are not black and white, very rarely. And, uh, out of this paradox of knowledge and the, lo the lo loss of our ability to think rationally and critically about issues that matter, we end up thinking that we are being progressive. And it's got so bad that in the year 2022, we can't even talk about a horrendous war going on without somebody bringing up, yeah, well, but this or that, or this about Putin, or bringing up Biden, or you know what I mean? This partisanship and the divide has become so bad that uh, people are afraid to even talk about that for fear of being whatever whatever it might be. Uh, we just can't have normal conversations anymore, and I think it's because people are trying to be and fit into a category or a box. I suppose it's always been that way. But because of this, a lot of people are called pessimists, cynics, or haters, and so be it. Really, it's just acknowledging what's in front of me and looking at the truth about things as I see it. And this brings me to the conclusion, which is sometimes I'll sit and question, well, why do I feel this way about this? Maybe I'm wrong, you know, maybe I should be thinking a little deeper on this issue. Even though I've thought about it consistently over and over and gone back and forth on the issue, I'm still always processing it. And then, you know, I'll come up with something like, well, I don't know, it's... The point is to always be open-minded and always be questioning your own intentions, your own ideals, and don't associate with a topic. Just be open to it. Go back to and rethink what we think we know, and uh, then we can stop wasting time on things that really don't matter. Let me know what you all think, and I'll talk to you next time. Peace out. Have a wonderful day.